Spirit of God has been speaking to me, and uh, I really want to encourage you this morning that we're, we're in very interesting times. It's so important that we connect with God and learn how to walk with God. And Shana uh, Let's look at this verse first. Isaiah 26, verse 3 and 4. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you for your presence. Thank you for speaking to us. Thank you for encouraging us. Thank you for who you are, my God. Isaiah 26, verse 3 and 4 says, You will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on you because he trusts in you. Trust in the Lord forever, for in Yah the Lord is everlasting strength. You know, when we, when we focus on God, it, it just brings us stability to our world. The Bible says that the Word of God is an anchor to our soul. He's the one we put our faith in. He's the one we, we, we trust in. He's the, he's the one who makes way for us. You know, and we've got to learn how to walk through these difficult times by trusting in God. We're Christians. We're not just the average Joe. We're not non-Christians. We're not people who uh, react about all sorts of stuff and everything that's going on. We have a faith in the living God. And God is a living God. He's proved that to us again and again and again. Philippians 4 verse 6 says, Be anxious for nothing. Be anxious for nothing. 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 There's a lot of things that can impact on our uh, situations and circumstances, but the Word of God says be anxious for nothing. What does that cover? <laughs> covers everything. Every situation and circumstance God has an answer for. And it's not just putting up with a circumstance. God has an answer. He has an answer. We have a God who is a living God. He wants to intervene in our circumstances and situations and bring an answer. It's not that, you know, we just put up with stuff. Sometimes we think, you know, we just got to muscle through it. But no, God says he will bring an answer. He will come through in power for us. We've got a God who is a living God. Anybody here got a testimony of the time God has come through for you? Someone give me a wave. Just look around, look at all those hands. God has come through for us. He's a living God. But he tells us to be anxious for nothing, but in all things with prayer and supplication, let your requests be made known to God. So it starts off by saying, don't be anxious, lift your request to God, but don't be anxious. Sometimes we can get so worked up about situations, circumstances. I mean, the truth is we can go through some tricky times, some difficult stuff. But God says there's a way for us to walk through this. There is a way. And part of it is to make sure that our soul, our mind, our will and our emotions does not rule. It's gone quiet in here today. <laughs> this is encouraging. I'm trying to encourage you. <laughs> Luke 12 says the same thing. Let's go over to the New Testament. See if the Luke, New Testament says something like it. Luke chapter 12, verses 22. Jesus said to his disciples, Therefore I say to you, do not worry. Well, look, it says the same thing. Do not worry about your life. <laughs> what you will eat, nor about the body, what you will put on. All the ladies are looking at me like, but I like having nice clothes, you know, what am I going to wear? All the men are saying, what am I going to eat? <laughs> <laughs> God nails us both, doesn't he? He doesn't leave either of us out. <laughs> Don't worry about it. Life is more than food and the body is more than clothing. Consider the ravens. I don't like looking at ravens. I don't like crows much. I come from the country. I grew up on the farm where the crows would pick the eyes out of the baby lambs. Don't like them much. Like shooting them. Am I allowed to say that? <laughs> Well, I grew up on a farm. Anyway, so let me move on. Consider the ravens, they neither sow nor reap, which have neither storehouse nor barn, and God feeds them. How much of more value are you than the birds? 
And which of you, by worrying, can add one tiny little bit to your stature? It's not going to make me grow any bigger. Worrying doesn't make me any taller, stronger, fitter, healthier. I heard somebody say once, if you worry, you die. If you don't worry, you still die. So why worry? <laughs> well, that's a bit of a negative slant. Anyway, <laughs> he goes on to say, if you're not able to do the least, why are you anxious for the rest? And if, if you then are not able to consider the lilies, how they grow, do they neither toil nor spin? And I say to you, even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. If then God so clothes the grass, which today is in the field and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, how much more will he clothe you, O ye of little faith? Do not seek what you should eat or what you should drink, nor have an anxious mind. It says we've got to watch our soul. We've got to watch the anxiety. We've got to not allow that to rule us because it pulls us out of faith. We've been doing a series on faith and looking at how to walk in faith, how to hear from God, how to step out in faith, how to be people of faith, how to get the answers of God for our world. And part of it is to watch this thing up here between your ears. Because it can pull you out of faith. It can pull you out of the place of receiving from God when you start to worry about stuff. And we get concerned. How's it going to happen? I've had times when I've been praying for an answer from God and I try to figure it out. Anybody try to figure out how God's going to do it? How are you going to do it, God? How are you going to do this? I'm lifting the God, how are you going to do it? How? And we start to worry. We start to, our mind starts to, maybe you're not like me, we've got an overactive mind. Maybe you're, you know, just full of peace and walking in faith. But I know I've had to battle with this. I had to get my mind back on the journey. Say, come on, mind, stop trying to go over, overactive, trying to figure out how, how God's going to do things. He's, he's a God who can come through in power. I don't know how he's going to do it. And God has amazed me time and time again with the different ways he's done stuff. <laughs> All these things the nations of the world seek after, and the Father knows that you need these things, but seek the kingdom of God and all these things will be added to you. If we seek what God wants, the kingdom of God, where God is king, we'll get all that stuff. If you get your priorities in order, it's amazing how God comes through. Hello? Well, that's just the word of God. Let's go on and have a look at this one in uh, Hebrews chapter 6. This is the one I really want to break open for us today. Hebrews chapter 6, verse 12 says, do not become sluggish, but imitate those who through faith, we've looked at this, who through faith and patience inherit the promises. I used to think patience, the only good thing that patients were for is for hospital. <laughs> Nobody got it. <laughs> I mean, who wants to wait for stuff? We've got a, a culture now, a society, to get everything today. Just go put it on the credit card. Just, you know, why wait? Buy it now. Let, let's just, you know, not put things off. Let's have it immediately. I want everything. I want the call of God. I want the purpose of God. I want to know what the future is. I want to know what's happening. And we want, want, want. We end up in this turmoil trying to figure everything out. But the Bible says... Imitate those who through faith and patience inherit the promises. It's not just faith, it's also patience. Take me a while to learn this one. Been in some situations where, come on God, you've got to come through. You know how they say sometimes God doesn't, doesn't come through till the 11th hour? What happens when you get up the 13th hour and 14th hour and has gone past your deadline? Sometimes our deadline is not God's deadline. But God comes through. We have a living God. He tells us we've got to learn to bring our soul into line and be patient. Quiet in here. Hebrews chapter 3. Just back over a couple of pages. You still with me? 
what good people you are. Hebrews chapter 3, verse 7. Therefore, as the Holy Spirit says, today, if you will hear his voice, if you will hear his voice, if you will hear his voice, today, if you will hear the voice of God. You know, if you can't hear the voice of God now, when things get a little bit more pressured and a little bit more you know, tumultuous, you're not going to hear him then because your soul will be carrying on with anxiety. Does that make sense? We've got to know how to hear God. Today, if you will hear his voice. Today. We've got to hear his voice today. When pressure comes, if you can't hear his voice, when there's no pressure, when the pressure comes, you'll have a lot of difficulty hearing it because you will get anxious. Your soul will start to react and you won't hear that voice. We've got to hear his voice today. If you will hear his voice, do not harden your hearts as in the rebellion in the day of trial in the wilderness. We've been talking about this. Last week I spoke about the trial of your faith. It's more precious than gold. In the day of trial in the wilderness where your fathers tested me and tried me, saw my works 40 years and said, because they did not listen, they won't enter into my rest. When we enter into faith, it brings a place of rest. In a place of rest, we have peace and we can walk through the storm. Just like Jesus in the boat when it was a storm and he was having a sleep. The disciples were full of anxiety, have an anxious mind, looking at the storm. We have storms of life. Sometimes the storms, you know, are just personal. Sometimes we're, it seems to me like at the moment the whole world is going through a bit of a storm. And there may be more to come. I've heard some people say, you know, why doesn't the church talk about what's happening with COVID? Friends, we are. We're not going to give you an opinion. I'm not going to speak of opinion about, you know, this is right or that's wrong and, you know, I don't want to come from that place. What I'm going to speak is how to walk with God through the storm. Are you hearing me? This is what I'm trying to talk about. Of how to have peace in the middle of the storm. Be anxious for nothing. Come on. <clears throat> this is very relevant for us. As Christians, we must be able to hear the voice of God, to not allow anxiety to rule us. When the trial comes, God comes through, just like he did in the day of rebellion, in the day of wilderness. You, you, that comes from Psalm 95 and it's repeated three times in the book of Hebrews. Three times it says that. And, and the trial, of course, if you want to look it up, it's in Exodus, where God had called the children of Israel out of bondage, out of Egypt. And they had this great deliverance and this great showdown. Moses was leading them. They had this showdown with Pharaoh and he put all these plagues upon Egypt which was specifically against the gods that Egypt worshipped. And they had these plagues and they led them through the Red Sea. The Red Sea parted, the Egyptian army followed and the Red Sea closed and swallowed them up. You can read it in, in Exodus chapter 15 and they started to dance and sing. Oh God, it's triumphed gloriously. The, the rider has been thrown into the sea. <laughs> they sang this magnificent song. And then God spoke to them and said, I am the Lord your God who heals you. Exodus 15, brilliant chapter. And after that, they were fantastic. This is wonderful. And we'll go into the wilderness following Moses. Three days we followed Moses. Three days later, we've got no food and no water. After they had this magnificent deliverance, there were three days without food or water. 
I don't know how you go without food or water for three days. I could go without food, that's not such a big deal. But without water, that's tough. They were without water. So they started to complain. We've had this great deliverance, but the first thing we do is starve. No water. Give us water. So they came upon some, a spring, but the waters were bitter. So Moses got before God, what are we going to do with, about this God? The people are complaining. We're in a trial. We're whinging. Anybody have a whinge when things go south? In my hand's the only one up. <laughs> you hear where I'm coming from? This is what the Bible says about how to walk through it. Okay, so they were in the wilderness. They had the bitter waters. And God said to Moses, here is a tree. And he got wood from the tree, a branch of the tree, and threw it into the waters. And the waters were made sweet. How does that happen? I tell you, when we come to the wood of the cross, <laughs> he can take away every bitterness out of our life, which he's done for me, and I'm very grateful. But he can take away the pain and the heartache and the hurt and take away the stuff when we come to the cross. And he makes the waters of our life, the inner life, sweet again. He takes out the bitterness out of our soul. And it, they came to the waters that were called Mara, which means bitter, and they were made sweet again. But they had no food, so they started murmuring again. Exodus chapter 16. We well, haven't got anything to eat, Moses. And they called it murmuring, which means they, they, I, they may be a little bit like Australians where they don't come to your face when they've got a complaint. They'd go to somebody else. Hey, we haven't got anything to eat, Dad. What's going on? We haven't eaten in a few days. I'm hungry. I'm really hungry. And I could smell them cooking down the road. What's going on? Kevin said to me this morning, what is it when you're always hungry you can smell somebody down the road? Oh, what's going on? I'm hungry. I'm hung murmuring. <laughs> Moses cried out to God and says, God, they're hungry. God says, they're not murmuring against you, they're murmuring against me. But this is what I'm going to do. By twilight, you'll have meat, and in the morning, I will feed you. And so at twilight, God caused all these quail, little quail, little birds, flew across, they landed. I mean, yeah, I think God must have sorted this out well beforehand, because quail don't fly much. He sorted it out well beforehand and he had these quail fly across. They were probably watching the opening of the Red Sea. Flying across, going into the desert, landed just on twilight. They were all starving. Here's some quail. Oh, has anybody had spatchcock for dinner? Little quail? I mean, anybody had roast chicken? You know, chop it into about a quarter. That's a quail. There's not much of them. You've got to have a, a couple of quail to have a mouthful, I think. You need like 20 quail eggs to have an omelette. <laughs> Tiny little bit. Anyway, they had meat for dinner. In the morning they got up and there was this mist that covered the ground and there was this thing on the ground that they had to pick up off the ground and it was like wafers made with honey called manna, which means, what is it? And God provided for them. Forty years they ate manna. God said, they saw my works 40 years. We've never seen it ever before or since. 40 years they were eating manna. I don't know about you, but after a couple of meals that are the same, I like a little bit of difference. I like something fresh. What are we going to have tonight for dinner, darling? We're having manna. What are we having for breakfast? Get up and get it off the ground. It's called manna. Can we have something different? Well, I can roast the manna. I can make manna omelette. How about we have manna burgers for lunch? <laughs> yeah, manna salad. Oh, give me some manna. I want manna. And then they complained about that. We, we were better fed back in bondage. We had leeks and onions and tasty things. And give me some leeks and onions. You know, sometimes God leads us 
When the Spirit of God came upon Jesus, the first thing that the Spirit of God led Jesus was where? Into the wilderness. It's the same principle, same truth here, that if we're going to go into the promises of God, we've got to deal with our soul that wants to jump in the way. If we're going to walk in faith, you can't do it out of a place of complaining. If we're going to walk in the answer of God, you can't do it from a place of murmuring. If we're going to walk under the unction of the Spirit of God, whinging and complaining won't get you into faith, won't get the answer of God for you. It won't. So when we go through a trial, we've got to be careful of the responses within our inner life that doesn't take us out of faith out of complaining against our circumstance and situation, out of complaining against you know, God, out of complaining against the leadership that, that we're under, out of complaining against the church. You know, the church doesn't do this or doesn't do that. You know, there were some people who decided to replace Moses in the wilderness called the sons of Korah. And I can tell you, God doesn't like it much when he anoints somebody and somebody else tries to usurp it. We've got to be people who honour what God honours. The sons of Korah, God didn't even wait to kill them before he buried them. (laughs) He brought them all out. Moses said, come out, you who are siding with that lot, you who side with that lot. And God opened up the ground, swallowed them. Didn't even wait till they were dead. God doesn't like it much. I was in a church and I disagreed with the leadership. And so I wanted to keep my heart right. I didn't like the direction the leadership was going. So I said, God, how am I going to handle this that's righteous before you? Because I don't want to be that person. I don't want to be the one who, who disobeys and stays. I know people that go into churches and they feel their role is to redirect the pastor and change the way the church is going. And I, I just think that's wrong. It's wrong before God. You know, God has set things up. He's the one who anoints. It's not my choice, it's his. This is the way he does it. And so I said, God, how do I handle this? I disagree with the way pastors are I don't like that direction that they're going in. It's just, anyway, I don't need to go into the details of it. But my, my response to do this right before God was to go to him and make sure I had a right relationship with him Honour him, honour them as the anointed leader, the one that God put in that place. And so I I can't agree with the direction, so it's time I left, because I'm not going to try and change you. And I don't want to be whinging and complaining and causing dissent amongst the congregation and opposing what you're doing spiritually. So it was time for me to remove myself is this making sense? Because I want to be right before God. I don't, I don't want to disobey and dishonor what God has set up. I want, to, I want them to be blessed in the direction that they're going and what they're doing. And I want God to bless me. Because if I, what goes around comes around. What you sow is what you reap. And if I'd sowed dissension, if I'd sowed hurt, if I'd sowed offense, that'll come back to me. But I chose to honour. So there are right ways to do things even if we can't walk together. We've got to walk with the values of the kingdom and represent Christ here. So there was no offence. There was no, I'm not offended with them, they're not offended with me. They say the door's to come open to come back any time. Thank you very much. It's a sweet relationship. And so we stay in sweet, we stay in a place where we can still fellowship. Rather than being the sons of Korah, I don't want the earth to swallow me up. <laughs> I've got to keep my heart with all diligence, which the other day, a few weeks ago. So I want to enter into his rest. Do not harden your hearts as in the day of rebellion. I want to enter into the rest of God and enter into faith. Be one who has faith come and see the power and the miracles and see the life of the Spirit come. But I, I've got to do it God's way. There are ways to do this. Jesus said, or sorry, God says, I am the Lord that heals you. I am the Lord that heals you. 
God says, I am the Lord that healed you. Uh, I, it's good for us to hear testimonies of miracles. I've got a friend, I've talked about him numbers of times. He's going to be ministering up in Gympie in uh, mid-January. And uh, uh, he says, incredible miracle. He says, the power of God flow. He sees children with autism healed. That's a major miracle. People with fibromyalgia healed. That's a major miracle. People with spinal problems healed. That's a major miracle. People with, with, with spiritual you know, things that hanging around delivered, set free. Power of God flow. I'm believing for that here today. I'm believing for it. Telling you these stories because I've seen it. I've seen God come through in power. We have a, a miracle working God. My son, my second son, was born with a hole in his heart. We prayed for him. Power of God touched him. He's a little baby. He is super, super fit. His personal record is running up and down Mount Coulomb twice in 40 minutes. I can climb up there once in 25 minutes. That's not coming down. He goes up and down twice in 40 minutes. Totally healed. My other son, my, my eldest son, was born with leaking spinal fluid at the base of his spine, spina bifida. We prayed for him. Took him down to the specialist. The specialist got angry with us. Says, why did you bring this child here? There's nothing wrong with him. Wasting my time. I was quite happy for him to be angry about that. I've seen so many miracles. So many, many, many. <laughs> We've got six children. We had four. Then I had a little operation. Then I had another one. My wife turned to me, and I wasn't very intelligent, I must say, at the time. She turned to me and says, what would you say if I told you I was pregnant? I said, really? Who's your father? <laughs> Stupid thing to say. Wasn't very smart. And as a pastor of a church in a small country town, everybody knew it. And the accusations came against her. So I thought, well, we better have another one. So we did. And then I went back and had another little operation. God, I've seen God, power of God come from so many times. So many times. This is what I'm encouraging you to. God is a miracle worker. I've seen it so many, many times. Many times. In my own personal journey, I've seen the power of God come through not just in others, not just here and there, not just in, in other meetings, but I have experienced the power and grace of God. He is the Lord who heals me. Great Holy Spirit is the one who comes through and heals. Great Holy Spirit can work for us. He is the great Holy Spirit. He comes through and meets our great Holy Spirit. I am the Lord who heals me. But he doesn't come when we, our soul gets out of whack and we start getting anxious and complaining. He is the great Holy Spirit. Look at this in Romans chapter 8. I'll jump over a, a couple of verses here. Romans chapter 8, verse 24. Romans chapter 8, verse 24. For we were saved in this hope, but the hope that is seen is not hope. For why does one still hope for what he sees? In other words, if it's in our face, you don't have to have hope for it. But we hope for what is yet to come. For if we hope for what we do not see, we eagerly wait for it with perseverance. We've got to have something which perseveres and holds on to God and says, I persevere, I'm pressing through, I'm holding on. Listen to verse 26. Likewise, the Spirit also helps in our weaknesses, for we do not know what we should pray for as we should. I don't know, but sometimes people think you get big, long, fancy prayers are going to get there, going to bring an answer. Sometimes I don't know how to pray about stuff. I think, God, how do we pray about this? What do we do? Beyond God, help. Help. God, help. Help. 
but the Spirit himself makes intercession for us. In other words, God takes our prayer, which is sort of, you know, not quite accurate, and he turns it into his prayer and takes it to God the Father and spiritualizes it so it's the right prayer. And God hears it. The Holy Spirit helps us. Great Holy Spirit helps us to pray. He, he makes it right and he comes through. <laughs> now he who searches the hearts of the mind knows what the mind of the Spirit is because he makes intercession for the saints according to the will of God, according to his will. We eagerly wait with perseverance. It says it like this in the Amplified. We wait with patience and composure. Patience and composure. We have faith, but we hold our faith before God with patience and composure. Be anxious for nothing. Do not worry. Be, let our faith go before God with patience, perseverance, composure, not being anxious, being at peace, staying in faith, not getting rattled, not getting all upset, but patience and composure, allowing the Spirit of God to intercede on our behalf as we walk in faith and see the answers of God come. And we all will like verse 28, which says, for all things work together for good according to those who are called according to his purpose. It's to love God, called according. We love that verse, but we've got to do the things that lead up to it. We've got to have faith with patience and composure, perseverance, staying in faith, staying in that place, expecting God to come through, expecting the great Holy Ghost to come through, expecting him to meet our need, not getting upset, not allowing our souls to run all over the place like little squalling babies. We looked after our grandchildren a couple of weeks ago and we had them down at the river and, and you know, we had this little one-year-old. How old is he? 18 months. And uh, we were playing with him in the shallows of the river and I was holding her and she saw Deb and she started crying. I want to go to Deb. Ah, ah, little baby cry. Now, I could have just handed her over, but I thought, no, I'm going to train her a little bit because that's how I'm wired as a dad. So I picked her up. She was crying and screaming to go to Deb. I picked her up and walked away from Deb, training her that you're not going to get your want by, by throwing a tantrum. I said to her, stop crying and we'll go back to you. Until you stop crying, we're not going back. Ah, she cried. I'd take another step away. Ah, I stop crying, then we can go back. <laughs> take another step. We're going to go all the way home if you keep crying. You seen her little baby cry? She was doing her best to control it. And the more she tried, the more... And, and so then she saw Deb. <laughs> okay, let's go back this way. Stop crying, and then we can go back. It only took a couple of minutes. A couple of minutes to train this little baby to control his soul. God spent... 40 years with the Israelites to the point where everyone that complained did not go into the promised land. But those who grew up with learning to obey and just persevere were able to go into the promised land. Are you hearing this? So Eva got to go to a promised land, got to went back to Nanny. <laughs> but God is saying the same thing to us. If you will hear his voice, faith works, but you cannot force 
the Spirit of God and he does not respond to anxiety and to stress. Allow the peace of God to rule your heart. He who keeps his mind on him will be kept on perfect peace. And anxiety won't throw you. We allow the answer of power of God to come. And then all things will work together for good. I've got some anointing oil here. The Bible says in James that he would sit call for the elders and let him be anointed with oil. King Solomon's blessing from Jerusalem anointing oil. Got the fancy stuff. I want to I want to pray for people for that that you know just believing for healing. The Lord your God healed you. I'm believing for a great Holy Spirit to come in power and bring his let his healing flow. You need a miracle in your body. You need a miracle for someone else. We're going to stand in the gap for them. Come out. We'll pray. We'll. I'm going to call for uh, Sharon if you'd come. Deb, um, Jack. One of our leaders of the youth, where have you gone, Jack? You can come and pray with us. We're going to lay hands on you and believe for the power of God to flow. We're going to believe for his miracle. Are you with me? Come on. You need a miracle. Come on. We're believing. I, I'm, I'm believing for the power of God to come. I'm believing for God to bring miracles into this place. I'm expecting it. Because God has promised it to us. Come on. Come out. There's, there's plenty of us who need something from God. And let the power of God flow. There's someone with lung problem? Who's got lung problems? That's, that's, there you go. There's a couple. There's a few with lung problems. Spirit of God. There's a, there's a lot of people in here with knee problems. There's knee issues. I see knees. God's going to heal knees today. He's going to heal lungs. He's going to heal knees. I, I, there's miracles flowing in this house. Thank you for your anointing, Holy Ghost.